1428 hours on April 4th, 2019. Um, taking a statement from Patrick Fox in relation to Vernon Files 2019-10877. Mr. Fox was arrested today by Council Hawkins for three counts of failing to comply with his probation order. I'm also going to let him know that he's under investigation by the Vancouver Police for uh, suspected of breaching probation by creating a website. Uh, he did not want to speak to the legal counsel. He's currently in his cell. I'm just going to go and get him, and I'll bring, bring him my audio recorder. both of which are saying I'm not a citizen of that country and was born in the other country, but I've got CBSA with their heads up their asses going, we're going to do whatever Homeland Security tells us. Um, so they keep allowing Homeland Security to deport me here, even though I've got documentation from IRCC and CBSA saying I'm not a Canadian citizen. So, I've been better. Yeah, so... Um, oh, and I've heard he's breaches. Oh, please, what a joke. Um, go on. Yeah, we obviously we went through this before. Um, you mentioned there that I testified against you mm -hmm. and all that. There's no hard feelings. I would ask today. You're doing your job. I, yeah. So Meyer is the one I have hard feelings against. That guy's just a dick. Yeah. I hope he gets throat cancer. But okay. Uh, so no hard feelings. Um, I was asked. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm, I was asked to come today this morning. If I could. I do a lot of interviews for me, which is what I told you back in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and you specialize in children, sexually assaulted yeah, children. Yeah. Good memory. I want to specialize in, sorry, sorry, investigating. Oh, yes. <laughs> investigating uh, that. So, uh, um, but, I mean, we went through this before, so I do have to tell you some stuff. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. you're very well versed on uh, all this. I, I, I was told that you were studying uh, quite a bit, preparing for your, for your trial back in 2016. So, yep. Um, <laughs> obviously, just so you know, it will be an audio, it will be recorded. I wouldn't uh, do it any other way. Perfect. Um, you, just like uh, Constable Hawkins told you, uh, you don't have to say anything to me, and anything you say can be given in evidence. Mm -hmm. Just like it's going to be. Hmm. Hopefully not like that. Well, hopefully not, but I'm saying same, I'm kind of, mm -hmm. I'm having a bit of a flashback to uh, you and I saying you had, a, you had a little more facial hair back then. And I probably have a lot less, I probably got a lot less hair on top. Surprisingly, I was held in ICE custody the exact same amount of time this time. Was it? Two and a half weeks. Yeah, really? Wow. Is that like a standard thing for them? Or? Nope. Oh. Um, just a coincidence? 
Well, the last time and this time, they couldn't get a travel document from the Canadian government, so what they did was they got the, they convinced the RCMP to request that I be brought back here for questioning. Previously, it was about the firearms. This time, it's about the probation violations. Okay. Um, so, I am a police officer. Obviously, yes, you know that. Um, uh, I was asked, like I said, to come and speak with you today. Um, I know there's been a bunch of officers that have probably spoken to you, jail, or, you know, correction, or not correction, sorry, uh, like the customs guys, the U.S. No, yeah, Homeland Security. Yeah, totally different there. You totally, are. yeah, totally. But I just want to get to make sure if anyone's made any promises to you of any kind of, you know, coffee favor. favor. Yeah, and that's not a promise. I'm just giving you that because mm. I'll drink a coffee with you. That, I'm not giving you the, the other officer, the female, that came down to uh, the border to pick me up. Oh, she promised you a coffee? Well, she didn't say promise, but she said, yes, yes, I'll get us a coffee. I'll get us both a coffee because I, I could use a coffee too. Yes. Well, I'll get us a coffee. I'm, I'm sure someone will get us a coffee. Um, but I want to make sure that if anyone's made any promises to you, mm-hmm. and, you know, that if, if you, if we promise you this and we, you're going to return the favor, uh, as far as, I'll give you an example. If I give, if, I would take courtesy, courtesy of salt. Yeah, um, courtesy was to say, I'll get your coffee to talk to Council of Pots. Mm-hmm. Has any of that happened where someone's promised to do something if you speak to me today? Mm-hmm. Perfect. And then on the flip side, has anyone threatened you, threatened any kind of violence or any kind of repercussions if you don't talk to me today? No. Nope. Perfect. Okay. Do you understand all that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know why you're here? Um, yes, because Mark Meyer is a dick. <laughs> okay. Now, more specifically, um, he approved some uh, breaches of probation for me on um, some specific conditions that I openly admit I did violate. And the reason I violated them... Hang on, let me show you. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, one black. Uh, so, there are two conditions in particular. One is that I not go within 100 meters of the U.S. border. The other one is that I not meet British Columbia. It's well established by this point uh, by everybody or with everybody except for Meyer and my ex-wife that um, I'm not a Canadian citizen. I don't have status in Canada. I've got documentation to prove all of this on my phone in, in um, my laptop bag out there. Um, and I have no authorization to be in Canada. So, by remaining in Canada, I'm breaking the law. Um, so I have this probation condition that says I can't leave, but if I stay, I'm breaking the law, which it's my understanding, um, at least in the U.S., a court cannot order somebody to do something that would compel them or force them to break the law. Therefore, that probation condition cannot stand. It, it has to be removed. Um, either that or IRCC has to grant me some kind of status in Canada. Um, Meyer keeps coming to court at these probation hearings because they keep trying to have that condition removed. He keeps showing up saying that, oh, all the evidence I've seen uh, supports the fact that you're a Canadian citizen. And I said, what evidence? You're not coming with evidence. You're coming with, you're just talking. And of course the judge is leaving everything that he says and I come with evidence from IRCC and the Ministry of Social Development and it all clearly states that I have no status in Canada. None at all. Okay. Judge doesn't care. So, on the 14th, I had another hearing to try to remove that condition. I even brought recordings of my telephone conversations with CBSA and with IRCC. And in those recordings, they clearly state that I have no status in Canada. Um, The judge then says that I'm trying to manipulate the system and that I'm playing games uh, the way I was talking to them on the phone or something. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a second, I'm coming with clear, concrete proof of, of my claims. Meyer's coming with just like vague allusions and suggestions about stuff. I mean, who the hell's playing games? So, she denied the request again, and I went, okay, this is just bullshit. This is, this is fucking insane. Am I supposed to stay here for three years and be homeless and not work or anything? Yeah. And spend every day wondering, is CBSA going to come and arrest me and hold me for 15 months today? So, that was it. I reached the point where I said, okay, this is just insane. I mean, I tried to play along for two and a half months. I requested the hearings. I had the hearings. I brought the evidence. So, that's those two probation conditions. Okay. Um, I believe that... I should say, yeah, I want to tell you one more thing. Um, so there's the three, obviously. You're also under investigation, um, and I've learned of all this today, mm-hmm. uh, brought in for just because I do a lot of anger. Uh-huh. Um, you're also under investigation by the Vancouver Police. Mm-hmm. Um, did, did they tell you this? No. Okay, so you're under investigation by Vancouver Police for another, for another breach. 
for relating to the website DesiCapueno.com. Sure. I just wanted to make sure the same rules apply in this room, that anything you say, you know, so you don't have to say anything, anything you say can be given evidence, but just wanted to be full fair and frank that you are also under investigation for that. Yeah, that's fine. But why would that be Vancouver Police? Why wouldn't it be you guys again? Because, so, I guess you were residing in Vancouver? Is that correct? You were living there? Well, I was thinking at the homeless shelter, yeah. Yeah. I think it's because they looked at it first, it came in wherever their complaint that you, that the website, sorry, that the website had been created, and then they, boom, they look at where he's living, it's in that jurisdiction, VPD starts to file. That's how it kind of starts. Yeah, that's fine. So, I just want to let you know everything else that's going on. I haven't thought of you since, I haven't heard of your name or thought of you since way back. Really? I've thought of you. Have you really? I've thought of everybody who's been involved in my case and me being in criminal harassment. I can understand that. I deal with a lot of files though, so it's a bit different, but what have you been thinking about? I'd rather not say. No? Really? I didn't think we had, I mean, obviously, hopefully not as bad as you feel your thoughts towards Meir, or Meir. No, definitely not. No, no. See, because Meyer was leading all of this. He was the one that was orchestrating all of this nonsense and colluding with Lagomat to suppress all this evidence and such. You were just there saying about what was said during the interview, which was kind of pointless and a waste of time because it was there in the recording. I mean, and I didn't object to the recording being played, so. Yeah, that's often the way it is. They've got to get it on the record, but you just have to go and listen to, sometimes I'll go there and they'll play the whole recording and I won't have to say a word. It's just to get it on the record. I'm there basically if I hear something that's, you know, an incorrect word or whatnot, amongst other reasons. So, do you have, like, this is a, it could be a platform for you if you want to, is there something you want to say, like, as far as, I mean, kind of. Other than Mark Meyer and the dick? Other than Mark Meyer and the dick. Like, what happened on March 15th, that's the day you got arrested at the border, right? I wouldn't say I was arrested at the border. Or, sorry, I should say taken into custody. Taken. But understand that I had first gone to the CDSA office at Peace Arch. I told them that I intend to leave. I'm going back to America. And I just want to know if Homeland Security contacts you in, like, an hour or something and asks about my status, are you going to continue to play these stupid games where you say, oh, yes, as far as we're concerned, he's a Canadian citizen and you can deport him here, or are you going to finally stop with that nonsense and say that, no, he's not Canadian, we're not going to accept him? So then I sat down while they investigated and stuff. And then the woman calls me over to the counter and says, oh, as far as we're concerned, you're a Canadian citizen and you'll always be admitted back to Canada. And I said, what are you basing this on? I mean, IRCC themselves have said, you see the document right there. And she says, oh, well, we checked with California. And I say, but California has no authority to determine if I'm a Canadian citizen or not. Anyway, that's the kind of stupid bullshit that I've been dealing with. So then she tried to talk me into just staying. And she said, well, Homeland Security is not going to let you enter the country anyway because you have no documents to prove your citizenship. And I said, yeah, that's fine. That's an issue for Homeland Security to deal with. And so I said, look, I'm leaving. Forget it. I'm walking across the, the border. So when I got to the CBP counter, like uh, Customs and Border Protection on the U.S. side, um, I told them that my name is Patrick Fox. I used to go by Richard Reese. Um, I was deported a few times. Uh, there's an order of removal. Um, I'm not trying to hide anything, not trying to conceal anything, not trying to sneak in the country or anything. Here I am. I'm a U.S. citizen. Please just figure out what the hell is going on, you and the Canadian authorities, and fix this so I can get on with my life. Um, they tried to talk me into walking back as well. They kept saying, oh, but the border's right there. It's just 20, mi- or 20 feet over there. Wouldn't you rather just go back and be free? And I said, no, I want to go before an immigration judge. I've got this proof now from the Canadian government that I'm not the person I was deported as, the person that you guys were saying I am. Um, and so I would like to present this now in court to show them this is not me. Okay. And so that's what happened at the border. Okay. I insisted. Um, then they tried to talk me into applying for asylum. And I said, but that's ridiculous. I mean... Like, yes, I feel or I believe that I was persecuted in Canada with this whole bullshit about the website and all because it's free speech. And, I mean, here you've got this psycho bitch in Arizona making these claims that, uh, oh, I'm afraid for my life and, oh, he's going to come here and kill me. But then she's laughing and joking with the RCMP. You heard the recording, right? Uh, I, I didn't, but I, I only... It's publicly available. Yeah. It's on the website. 
Oh, is it? Okay. Everything is on the website. Is it really? Oh, how I didn't publish it. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm only prohibited from publishing, disseminating, or distributing information about Capuano, Pendleton, and Sage. I'm not um, prohibited from continuing to create and maintain the website, say, on my own laptop, and as long as I don't publish it or make it publicly available. Okay. My position is, whatever's on the internet right now, I didn't put it there, so. Okay. How, um, you probably remember, I'm, even though I'm 35, I'm a tech skiller, or what, mm-hmm. you're obviously a very, very techy guy, so I don't understand kind of what you mean by that, mm-hmm. um, cause I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never built a website or anything technology, mm-hmm. like you said, you, you, you have those materials, but you're not the one uploading, is that what you mean? I and other people have those materials. I've had them. I've had them before since I was released. Um, yeah. The Crown was saying, "Oh, there's no way you could have this stuff." Well, I do, obviously. I mean, it's on the internet now. So well, why wouldn't you have it? Because your defense. No, no, I know, but um, they gave it to me on a hard drive, and I had to give it back to them later. Oh, and yeah. they're telling them, but I got my own copy from other sources. Okay. And they said, "No, there's no way that that could happen. Nobody in the RCMP or in the Crown's office, whatever." give you a copy of the disclosure material, okay. jack off. Him. How did you get your... I'm not going to tell you that. No? No. Okay. Because first of all, if I did tell you that, um, yeah. then the person who assisted me with it would probably lose her job. Okay. Oh, sweet. Okay. Is you two black? Okay. Two black. Anyway, thank you. Gee, last time you brought me Tim I know. Times are tough. I guess that was a bigger charge in investigation. Well, no, it, you know what it was? It was had more resources, I guess, available mm-hmm. to do that. But we can maybe get Timmy that this really sucks. But that definitely was a much bigger investigation because you guys actually mm-hmm. sent constables down to, or and a corporal down to L.A. and Arizona. Yeah. So clearly somebody was really trying to stick it to me. Kind of like how they're trying to stick it to me now, bringing me back here from the U.S. for probation violations? Come on. I don't okay. know, man. I'm, I'm so far behind because I literally, I work in, I actually switch units. I'm in serious crime unit now. Mm-hmm. Um, but because I do so many interviews, they brought me in. So I literally did not know anything until this, until That's what you said last morning. time. I know, it's all true. I'm on the interview team here in Burnaby. Mm-hmm. So it's quite, it's quite often that we get pulled in to, to speak to people, um, but uh, well, what were we talking? We were talking about oh yeah, the uh, publishing. Oh, and the, oh yeah, yeah, I'm very. I know you're not gonna tell it, but I'm very curious. You know, we you said someone would lose their job, but of course, yeah. I mean, if there was somebody in the Crown's office or the Ministry of Justice and or the RCMP who had obtained and provided me copies of the material. Of course, they would lose their job. Are you talking like the statements and everything? Okay. All the RCMP, the RTCCs, all the RCMP, the audio recordings and video recordings of all of the RCMP's interviews, um, even kept one of victim impact statements that the Crown didn't want me to have a copy of, and the judge said that they're not going to provide me a copy of, and I said, but the criminal code requires that I, the defendant, get a copy of it. Yeah. And they still refused. <clears throat> I got that. I've got the recordings from my psych assessments and. What else? Did you get it all when after your release, or while you were in custody? Well, all the stuff that was available prior to my release, I got prior to, but like the psych assessment didn't happen until after I was released. Okay, and you got a copy of that? An actual recording of, yeah. The whole okay. Um, but no, I'm not going to give any information about how I got it or who gave it to me. Or, um... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, the thing about the publishing of the website. Um, okay, so, a website is, think of a website like a book. Yeah. Um, and so, think of it as, I'm, the probation condition would say, okay, you're not allowed to publish any books. Um, but that doesn't prohibit me from writing a book on my laptop with the expectation that once the probation is finished in two years and eight months, yeah. uh, then I can go ahead and publish it. Or once I get deported or leave the country or something. Um, and so instead of a book, though, it's a website. So there's nothing in the probation conditions that says that I can't continue 
to maintain or even create a new website about the same topic and content on my own computer as long as I don't publish it. Okay, I see what you're saying. Now, there's nothing in the probation conditions, obviously, because there's no way a court would be able to word this, um, yeah. that would prohibit any other person in the world from publishing that information. Okay. As long as I as long as long I don't give a copy of the content or of the website to the person for the purpose of publishing it, then... So you're basically saying you're, you, you've written something on a computer? I'm not saying I did. Yeah. I'm saying I could. Okay. Um, so how did all that material get written then? Uh, who wrote, who's the, who's um, the author of that, mm. the latest uh, posts and whatnot? That's not relevant because the probation condition only pertains to publishing, disseminating, or distributing information. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. on if you, uh, I'm still curious to know. Yeah, I decline to answer that. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, I respectfully decline. Just so you know, I'm not declining to be spiteful. Oh, that's okay. Because you didn't remember, no hard feelings about this whole thing, right? Even though I, I'm sensing some on your YouTube. Uh, you know when the last time was that I had any contact with my son? The day before I was arrested. May 26th, 2016. Yeah. You know what that dirty cunt did after I was arrested? Yeah. Cut off all contact. Yeah. Even openly said it in her, in, in her RCMP interview. She's proud of it. Yeah. She won. Dude, it's her big victory. It's like they say, I don't know what you were in for, bitches be crazy, right? I mean, we're having for that saying. Yes, yeah. yes. But, see, it's because of this psycho cunt that everybody thinks that, oh, she's a poor victim, yeah. I lost custody of my son, I got deported to a foreign country that I have no status in, that originally, or initially, I was working here illegally, but it wasn't a big deal, because if I got caught, I would just get deported. But yeah. I can't work illegally now, because I'm on probation. Um, now, I can go to jail for it, because if I break the law, it's a breach. Um, so... This evil woman does all this stuff and then completely cuts off all contact with my son. Um, yes, there's going to be hard feelings. And yes, this probation bullshit can go ahead and you know, the court and Meyer can play their games for the next two years and eight months. But after three years, it's going to end and I'm going to say, fuck the court. And I'm going to say, fuck Meyer. And I'm going to say, fuck everything else. And I'm going back to my country of origin and everything goes back to normal. What's uh, like? What was your what was your end game, your plan at the board? I know you kind of spoken talked about it a little bit. Like, yes, we go you have a goal. Like I just said, yes. go before and you then, go before an immigration judge, and then hope with hope that you had your evidence to go to the and live in the states. Okay, here's the thing: I was convicted of perjury based on the allegation that I am a person named Ricky Reese from Sudbury, Ontario. Um, and then I was uh, oh, and also the false claim of U.S. citizenship. Um, then I was ordered removed from the United States based on that conviction. Nothing else. They didn't, the ICE didn't then go, or the, the immigration court didn't say, okay, we've determined that you're a Canadian citizen based on this stuff over here. They just said, you were convicted of this, so you're obviously not a U.S. citizen. That's what uh, the basis of the deportation was. If I come back ten years later with proof that I'm not that person that they deported me as, that person that they were insisting that I was, um, it's going to look extremely bad for both the uh, the district court. For I mean, how can how can a U.S. citizen be convicted of false claim of U.S. citizenship when it would be so simple, so easy for him to to prove that he's a U.S. citizen? But then you have lawyers like Lagomat or or Eisenberg on that perjury case that cooperate with the Crown and uh, or in the U.S. it would be the U.S. attorney yeah, um, and refuse to to show the evidence that supports what I'm saying. So. Um, ICE definitely does not want me to go before a judge because if I show this evidence that proves that I'm not Ricky Reese from Ontario, um, oh, and get this, um, Meyer apparently contacted Steve Reese, who is Ricky Reese's father um, in Ontario. Okay. Um, Steve Reese apparently told him that I am his son, Ricky Reese, and that he is willing to do a DNA test to prove that. So when Meyer sends me this email, and I say, excellent, I've been bugging you people to get a DNA test for years. Don't you remember how many yeah. times I can say, why don't you just get a DNA test? Um, even Capuano would say, oh, this is father, he's willing to do a DNA test. Um, and then when, I, when Meyer sees that that's what I want him to do, yeah. all of a sudden then he's talking about, oh, we don't need to do a DNA test because we have all this other evidence over here. So when I went to court on the 14th, I asked the judge, to order the Crown to request the DNA test from Steve Reese and Peggy yeah. Tampona, both of the parents. And the court said, that's not going to happen. That's not relevant to this matter at all. 
And I'm thinking to myself, how can it not be relevant? Because it's, it's directly relevant. Because if I have no status in Canada, you can't force me to stay here. I mean, it's not legal. Yeah. So, you should be able to understand a little bit of the frustration that I'm going through dealing with this. I, I do. And then I've got this sociopathic ex-wife who, she's crying on the witness stand, but laughing with the RCMP, and she does these news media interviews where she makes everybody feel sorry for her. Meanwhile, she's walking around living her life, yeah. getting a big kick out of it, thinking the whole thing is a joke. She's completely unaffected by the website. I can totally understand, especially not being able to remember, I have a son as well, mm -hmm. I don't remember that, but... Uh, yeah, if I wasn't able to see my son, I would be... I don't know what I would do. I would be probably in your shoes, just spinning around and trying to figure out... So is that your goal? Is obviously that what your objective oh, yeah. is to be with your son? My, my end game, you were asking what my end game was yeah. when I showed up at the border. Uh, my end game was to get a, a, a hearing in the immigration court before an immigration judge to show them this proof that I'm not the person I was deported as. Um, and then from there, obviously, the perjury conviction would fall apart, the order of removal would fall apart, and... So then they would have to vacate those. And, um, and then, of course, they would not be able to keep sending me up here. Um, but right now there's an order of removal. So ICE has the legal authority to remove me to Canada if Canada will accept me. But this time and the last time, Canada wouldn't accept me. So like I said, what ICE has done is um, gotten the RCMP to request that I be sent back here. Previously, it was about the firearms and the website. Right, right. And I don't know if you've seen the disclosure material, but there was actually stuff in there, emails, where um, the U.S. authorities went as far as to say that I had crossed the border with the intention of going to Arizona to murder my ex-wife. Yeah. And we're like, where the fuck are you getting this from? Murder my ex-wife. Anyway. I, I've seen some of the websites. Um, <laughs> to say... Uh, I I'm assuming you mean the new website, the one that I had nothing to do with publishing. The new website, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. I did see the old one too, but I don't remember anything as well as that. Basically the same, just different color scheme, and it didn't have that whole RV Fox section. Yeah, exactly, okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 there was a lot of material there, but I just kind of went down and saw all the, all the profiles of uh, everyone featured there, and uh, I did see my name on there as well, and... I yeah, I, I, I don't think I said anything. I think it's all no, like next to you, right? There was, I was trying to think, like, is there anything I can say? I'm like, mm, no, yeah. really. No, yeah. I think I just said something about, um, there's not really anything to say. I mean, yeah. not really all that I think it's overwhelmingly... <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmingly forgettable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine, I worked with the team, and so we were all, we actually laughed. It was pretty funny. Um, and then also another one, do you remember what you said about Heather? Yep. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, 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 oh, hang on, the way you phrased that, you said, do you oh, remember sorry. what you said about Heather? Do you remember what is said about Heather? I remember what is said about yeah. Heather, yes, uh, or Miss Montagliani. Miss Montagliani, yes. I mean, yeah, she's an attractive woman. Yeah, she's yeah. also an RCMP yeah. officer, if I run into her, she'll probably kick my ass, but... Oh, no, no, she's, she's, she's a nice lady. She's one of the good ones, she's not the few and far between, usually, but... Especially now, like, 2019... Seems like we're all about. Um, uh, I gotta be careful. Actually, <laughs> you say you gotta be careful. I gotta be careful when I talk about uh, all of the women. Um, oh, don't even get me started. About yeah, the and stuff. Yes. And if there wasn't such militant feminism, over the top militant feminism in Canada right now, I wouldn't be sitting here. None of this would have happened. Yeah. Because people would have taken the time to to look at both sides of it and went, oh, she is a psycho bitch. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this website. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's out of control right now. I mean, I've never seen. Oh, obviously, nobody's ever seen it like this. You can't say anything. You can't. Mm. Right. Trudeau. You know, oh, I, Trudeau. I, oh, yeah. He's going down though. That's for sure. I would say I hope, but well. Yeah, you never affect me. Yeah. Well, the reason I wouldn't yeah. say I hope is because hopefully I won't be here, so it won't affect me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely won't be voting for him. Uh, mm. Yeah, he's apologizing for everything. Uh, and the, yeah. Apologizing for everything except what he and his party have done. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I've been staying uh, well upstate on that. It's, uh, I think that's their full. Their numbers are dropping like the double digits, which who knows what it'll mean. I mean, we've seen the polls in the states yeah. and the, the nothing, but um, the past two and a half weeks since I've been in the U.S., um, I haven't had any Canadian news, so I don't know anything okay. about what's happened in the past couple of weeks. But um, notice. There's no talk about another charge of criminal harassment 
So there's a new website up. And the old criminal harassment was based substantially on the old website. So now there's a new website, which is almost identical, but has more stuff added to it. The new website would be way more harmful to Capuano, because now there's all this proof that she committed perjury and how horrible of a person she is. Yet, mark my words, nobody's going to charge me with criminal harassment again, because if they do, she would have to come and testify again. And I've got, I don't know if you've seen on the website or my affidavit that I filed in the Court of Appeal, so much proof of all this perjury that she committed and that Meyer and Lagerman knew about, but they refused to cross-examine her on. So, I find out... I don't know if that's why, I mean, perhaps, but I'm not sure. Like, I'm not involved in any part of it. But you will be. I will be. I think we'll be, maybe we will see each other again in a courtroom. We'll see. But yeah, I basically, after today, I won't have any more investigators. Same as last time. So, what do you want to know about the... There was other probation violations or breaches that... Yeah, there's the, I mean, there's the three that the burden would be. So, it's the, I mean, you went to the border. Yeah, within 100 meters of the border. Yeah. That's British Columbia. That's British Columbia. I told you my defense on those. Yeah. Did you, and then obviously you didn't tell your police officer. My defense on that is, I was in Homeland Security custody. I had no way of contacting them. Okay. Now, you could say that, oh, I was required to tell them 48 hours before I left the Yukon, except that I didn't know 48 hours before I left the Yukon. Okay. In fact, I had gone to report for probation that morning of the 15th, and then he told me that the RCMP was investigating something about a website or something. And that was around the time that I decided that, okay, this is it. This is enough. I've had it with this bullshit. This is fucking crazy. So, that was when I decided to leave. And then I went to the border. Had I not been detained by Homeland Security, then I would have contacted them and let them know. But I was detained, so. Okay. And if you have Homeland Security get the recordings of my telephone calls from there, you will see that I asked my friend Liz to call, whatever is it, I can't remember his name, Benji something, the new probation officer. I asked her to call him to let him know. I think I had a note. Sorry, go ahead. That I was no longer in the country. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's the probation officer. And I wrote his information down so that I could have Liz call him to let him know. Because I told him that I would let him know when I left the country. So these notes you made were in the States then? Yes, that would have been when I got to the detention facility. They let you go on your phone, so if you need to get any numbers out, you can call numbers. So. Okay. Okay. Did you, how long had you been planning on going to the States, or was it, like, when did you finally, I know you said the 15th was your final. That was the breaking point, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I had planned to go back all along. In a worst case, what I told myself was that the absolute worst they can do is keep me here for three years, the probation is going to end in three years, and then I can go back. And so, based on that, I would say, yes, the moment I was sentenced, I knew I was going to be going back to the U.S. It was just a question of when. So, I was originally intending to go back when the probation ended. Well, originally, I was expecting that the appeal was going to proceed, and then it would all be vacated on appeal. But then they pulled this crap about, oh, you've got to pay $2,000 for the transcripts. And I'm like, I already have the transcripts. And they're like, no, no, these are the photocopies that you need to submit to the court. I'm like, $2,000 for photocopies? So then I told the Court of Appeals that I can't possibly afford that. I'm homeless. I mean, look, this whole situation, this case has put me in this situation where I'm going to be homeless for three years. So, I don't even know what's going on with the appeal now. I didn't bother with the case management conference that was on the 20th, because obviously I was in Homeland Security custody. So that was my original plan, was that the appeal would proceed, and everything would be vacated, and then I would go back. But then when it started looking like that wasn't going to happen, then I was thinking, in the worst case, I would have to wait the three years. But, of course, then there's also the issue of there's such outrageous misconduct that occurred in my case, my trial with Lagomat and Meyer, and I've got proof of all of that, and all these audio recordings. 
And eventually, um, some news media, probably some men's rights organization or something, is going to stumble across it, and they're going to go, holy fuck, what happened here? And then it's going to be in the news, and then the Ministry of Justice is going to be scrambling again, go, oh my god, we got bad public relations here, we need to do something, quick, quick, vacate this guy's stuff, and let's get rid of him. Which is what I figured probably would have happened after I went down to the U.S., but it uh, hasn't happened yet. But you, yeah. What's that men's, or not men's, but they're quite conservative. Um, I kind of enjoy their readings. Uh, they're actually catching on quite a bit. Uh, they've covered the pipeline stuff quite a bit. Uh, that would be who... Uh, I can't remember. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. They originated in Toronto or it's something? Uh, something. I can't think of it. Anyways. There's quite a few, uh, at least they're popping up more and more. Obviously, this kind of, the, the, or the society that we're yeah. in right now is going to generate more of these com- people. Are, uh, and if you look at Canadian social history, though, you'll see that this happens over and over again in Canada. It swings from one extreme to the other extreme. Yeah. Um, to hell with it. It's not my problem. I yeah. have nothing to do with this country anymore. Yeah. I've got proof sure. now that, uh, and you're more than welcome to look at the proof. I've got the document printed from the Ministry of Social Development. Okay. That's what they are. They gave me a few things here. I don't know if any of these are them. No, no, it's, uh, well, these are things that, uh, I had at the jail out there. Okay. Um, is this where you were? Yeah, that's the contact information for the jail. Okay. Um, oh, this is stuff I wanted Liz to send to me, but then I thought, you know what, hold on, let's see what's going to happen. Um, I was going to wait. Did, like, did you write this following a phone conversation with her, or like, was it kind of mail to her? No, no, this is stuff that I asked her to print and send to me on the phone. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, but you see, this is all stuff that supports my claim that uh, I'm not a Canadian citizen. Yeah. Okay. Um, is this the website then that you guys can sign into? No. Check your account. Is that the? Well, you? yeah, that's how she sends me money on oh, my okay. canteen or commissary account. Um. Well, Om is just a guy I knew up here. I wanted to get a hold of him to let him know that I'd left. Uh, set up Gmail. Not sure what this. I mean, Gmail.com on the tablet. What tab? I'm, I have no idea what I'm talking about here. Because you have a tablet, right? Because I think we have. We well, yeah, but yeah, but I had that tablet with me. And you have a laptop, is it too, or is that a laptop up there? But they took the uh, people that arrested you today? No, 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 no. I didn't have any computers with me. Oh, okay. Um, because since I had, since I had gone oh, to uh, the probation officer and he had said that the RCMP was investigating about a website and then I decided that uh, that's enough of this bullshit, anything that I would have had with me that could have possibly associated me with the website in any way, um, obviously I would have gotten rid of. Um, I didn't keep my laptop with me because I didn't want to have it when I crossed the border because one, it's just more to carry unnecessarily, and two, um, just in case this happened. Okay. Um, do you remember when you were interviewing me three years ago and you were asking, why would I ship all my stuff to Los Angeles if I was thinking maybe of moving to Toronto? It doesn't make sense. And like, why spend all that extra money? And I said, well, because I knew that there was a possibility that I might end up being arrested. And then if I was arrested and detained for some period of time, I would end up losing everything. At least if it's with my friend in Los Angeles, I'm not going to lose it. Okay. Same idea. And so you, see, you see how no one believed me. The laptops and computer is uh, uh, on the States or in California? Oh, no. That laptop that I had here was just an old one that I had uh, sent that I could afford to lose, but um, I just didn't want to have it with me at the time. Okay. Um but like I said, if there was anything incriminating on there, which there really wasn't, but if there was, obviously I would have deleted it. Just like how all this stuff here, obviously I knew that it might end up in your hands. And yeah. So you might be like, uh, I heard the woman speaking earlier, something about um, in this to-do list. Uh, yeah. About um, adding editor at desicapuano.com to Thunderbird. Yeah. And she was kind of making a big deal about that, and I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Do you think that you caught me slipping up or something? Oh, not I you, I mean her. Yeah, no, no. I Obviously, heard. everything on here, stuff that uh, I know you guys might end up with. Especially, so what did you mean? Like, what does it mean? What does that mean? Like, adding somebody as an editor? Mm-hmm. What did you mean? No, no, not as an editor. Sorry. Um, this email address. Yeah. Editor at desicapuano.com. Adding it to the contacts, I guess, is probably what I meant there. Okay. Okay. 
Because Let's contacts say, on the website? No, no. Um, contacts in my Thunderbird account on my computer. Oh, okay. Thunderbird account is... Thunderbird is an email client. Okay. Like Outlook. Okay. My Sorry. Oh, it's, uh, Sorry. it's more common like in Unix environments. In which shape? Unix. Okay. Like yeah. Linux. Okay. Um, see, because let's say if I wanted Liz to send an email or anybody to send an email uh, on my behalf and if I'm in jail, um, some people are a little slow on the computer. Yeah. And so if the email address is already in the contacts, then if she types EDI, then it comes up. She doesn't okay. have to type in the whole thing or I don't have to worry about if she spells it wrong or something. So that's probably what that was. Okay. Um, to print uh, PDF from ETIP uh, on HP laptop. So is that the laptop you're using then? I have many, many laptops. Okay. But you must have that one somewhere, or she has it. But the HP. I decline to answer that. Okay. But you'll notice it's written so generically on the HP laptop. I mean, like what? Eight of my laptops are HPs. Okay. Oh, I have eight. Where do you store all these in? Places. <laughs> <laughs> Outside. I didn't expect to get that today. Okay. Yeah. Um. Um. So, go ahead, pick anything on there. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for it, or I'm sure it's so vaguely written that it could be construed many different ways. Yeah, I mean, I was I was uh, in Homeland Security custody. Homeland Security doesn't follow the laws. I'm not going to write down anything that they could just come over to my bunk, look at it, and could incriminate me. Okay. So. Um... Well, this coffee was delightful. I don't suppose yeah. you can get more, though, huh? We probably can. I would take another one as well. Uh, just one second. Was it good? <laughs> no. But it's caffeine, so... Um, so, w and then, so when you get to the States, what's your, what was your end game? Like, if you wanted to live there and decide to get a job? Like, what was your plan? If you would if you were to be granted, you know, that they believed you, the judge, that yes, you're an American, what was your plan? Um, to go back to Los Angeles, to get back to my life. <coughs> Here in Canada, my case and the website and all was a big deal on this leftist, uh, bleeding heart feminist media. Yeah. Made a huge deal about it. Um, but if you look at all the news coverage, there was absolutely nothing in the United States about the trial or any of the, the charges or anything. Because everybody thinks down there it is such a pathetic joke. People are going around laughing at uh, Justin Trudeau and about like how this ridiculous feminism is up here. Yeah. Um, when some of the people that work at the uh, detention facility and they would ask me like, well, what, are, "What are you here for? Like, what did you go to prison for?" And so I tell them about it, and then I tell them, "You can Google it. You can see the news stories on there." And uh, then they would come back the next day or something and say, that is fucking outrageous. <laughs> you went to prison for three and a half years for creating a website for just telling the truth about your ex-wife and publishing the proof of what you were saying. Yeah. I'm like, yes. So, in the U.S., um, they would probably, the either employers either wouldn't care about it or they would look at it and they would go, holy fuck, you poor guy. Yeah. Here in Canada, um, there's no way I'll be able to get a job. And, and why are you doing it? Oh, God. One time, Meyer shows up at court, oh, that little bitch, yeah. and he says, oh, well, perhaps Mr. Fox might not be able to get a job in the line of work that he's used to working in, but surely he'll be able to get some job. Okay, so I'm going to go from a software engineer at $150,000 a year to working at Burger King. That's perfectly acceptable, all because I created a website and told the truth about my ex-wife. Yeah. Not a single threat. Never said anything threatening to her. Never said anything intended to be threatening. Never said anything that could even be construed threatening when you read the entire context. Um, this country's fucked up, man. Um, yeah, so I mean, times have changed. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not commenting on you, you can, but I'm saying as far as what we were talking about, you know, the bleeding hearts, like you say, it uh, certainly has changed. Uh, it's been drastic in the last but like year I, and a half, two I, years I, that... I can't believe that there are so many men here that just sit back and just let it happen. Yeah, it's like it's, it's becoming. Uh, I'm not saying that men should go around beating up women. No, no, certainly nobody should go around beating up anybody. No, but uh, to just like ah, uh, 
all this stuff but as soon as a man is accused of something that's it his career is ruined and his life is ruined and all and then they find out later that oh he didn't do it he was innocent news doesn't say anything about that yeah no so you're my end game you're, you're telling the truth I mean I don't know I, I've, I actually have actually seen an article that, so maybe the, the men are getting the uh, the, the our, our understanding of 50 it's never been before there's now more single people in the lower mainland than people in a relationship so maybe people are uh Finally, getting the news and men are starting to <laughs> just, just have one night stands or not, not stay in relationships. Mm-hmm. Women can be uh, quite. Yeah, you got to be careful with the one night stands too, though, because yeah. there are some women who will be ashamed or embarrassed about having had a one night stand and accuse the man of rape. Right. Well, yeah. It happens. Yeah. Um, so, so did you want to get in back into Gabriel, right? Into his. Uh, well, obviously I would like to. I mean, when I was released uh, back at the end of December, I sent an email to the last known email address for him, um, and I sent a message to his uh, Instagram account. Um, didn't get a response to any of that, um, so I don't know if he's even still using uh, that email address. I'm sure that Desiree has made him give her the password, and so I'm sure she has been accessing it. Um, his most recent posting on Instagram was from November 2017, right around the same time I was sentenced. Um, but then I saw, like, from some of his other friends on Instagram, um, pictures that he's in that were more recent. And I found some records uh, on his school's website showing that uh, last year he made the honor roll or something. Oh, so okay. he's doing well. Um, but at the same time, when you have a parent who's a psycho like her, and my mother was a psycho like that too, and so when you're living in that environment, you start picking up some of the habits, and that's really what I've been so scared of, um, that he starts acting in that way and thinking that's normal. Anyway, everybody keeps saying, oh, he's 18 now, he can choose for himself. People are fucked up in the head. Um, he's been with her for five years now, he's got a life in Arizona, he's got friends and that he... Uh, goes to school with and all you can't expect that a child is just going to go oh my father's out of jail so I'm going to move to another country and go live with him and just leave everything that I have here Um, people are just so overly simplistic sometimes Mm -hmm. so ideally uh, well ideally what I would have wanted was to go back to Los Angeles to get in touch with him let him know that I'm out It's his decision if he wants to come back and live with me and such. Um, I believe he's in his last year of high school right now. Um, I don't know what he's got planned for university. I'm sure that Desiree hasn't put any money aside for university or anything. Um, And if she's still with the guy that she was with before, who knows what that situation is. James James Pendleton. Yeah. And since Gabriel's still going to that same school, the high school in Suarita, I'm assuming they're still together. Um, and he had very low self-esteem, so probably he would still be with her. Um, James had low self-esteem? Oh, yeah. Okay. When you listen to like his RCMP interviews and stuff, and you can tell. Okay. Um, and Desiree usually goes out with guys that have low self-esteem because they're easy to manipulate and control. Like, you look at um, Michael Capuano, her ex-husband, uh, that, um, Christopher Lochner, the one that was getting in trouble with the law and everything. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, that would have been my end goal, is to go back to Los Angeles, uh, reestablish contact with Gabriel. Hopefully, he would have some interest in returning to Los Angeles, maybe going to UCLA or something, and then we could try to pick up from there. But, um, I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, he might be so far gone now with all the white trash nonsense and stuff. Yeah. He might be into drugs for all I know. Okay, well, hopefully not. Did you have an end game? Like, so that's that's Gabriel. That makes sense to me. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I figured. Did you have any kind of end game or plans with the uh, the what like the website or continued? Uh, I'm not gonna say publishing, but continued uh, broadcasting of some about. I right? can I can say that once I am no longer in Canada, since I am not a Canadian national or citizen or subject of Canada. Um, the probation becomes moot once I return to my country of origin. Um, like, if I were already in Los Angeles, Homeland Security would not have spent the money to come and get me and bring me all the way back up here to extradite me for a probation violation. 
The only reason they did in this case is because they needed to get rid of me before I go before an immigration judge with this new evidence. And so that's just a convenient thing. You just throw them in the back of a truck and bring them to the border. So that being the case, once I'm no longer in Canada, yes, I have every intention of continuing to maintain the website as well as the new website about all of the misconduct that occurred in my case. That RV Fox page, that section on the website, that is a prelude to an entire website that is going to be coming about, not only about the RV Fox case, but also about Homeland Security and how they detained me for four years before and tried to deport me based on their allegation that I was this guy from Ontario. Oh, it's just because the light, it looked like there was coffee in there. That's why I was checking. I was like, I could have swore I drank it all. More coffee, sorry. Now, I'm openly admitting that because, as I said, since I have no ties to Canada, even though I'm on probation in Canada, once I, as a foreign national, leave Canada and return to my country of origin, a Canadian court has no authority or jurisdiction over me. All of the case law along those lines deals with people who have some tie or connection to Canada, and then they leave the country, they violate, like they engage in conduct that would violate the probation conditions, and then when they come back, they end up being prosecuted for violating probation, and they try to claim that, oh, but I was outside of Canada, and so it was outside your jurisdiction, so it shouldn't have mattered. But those are all situations where the person still had some tie, some connection to Canada. Okay. You said that you would maintain, or is the other site still being maintained then? Is there two sites running right now? Other sites? Oh, you mean the original Desiree Capuano? Yeah. No, well, okay, there's a copy of it. There's a thing on the Internet called the Internet Archive, which is a non-profit organization that makes cached copies of other existing websites. And so back in 2016, they had made a cached or backup copy of the DesireeCapuano.com website. Okay. So even when the hosting plan expired in, I was released in 2018, so I guess it was, what, January 2018 is when it expired? And so then the original website went offline, but that cached copy remained accessible publicly on the Internet at archive.org, I believe the URL is. Okay. But that's completely beyond my control. I have nothing to do with that. So, I mean, the Crown can try to hold me responsible for that if he wants, but... That's probably going to be your copy. Uh-huh. Now, the other website, the new one... Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, they got nicer cups. Huh. I don't think my coffee is there. Do you agree? I guess I can't be... Beggars can't be choosers. Sure they can. This is Canada. From what I've seen of the homeless people here, yes, beggars can definitely be choosers. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. I would use a pen. I don't know what I've been using. Oh, okay. That's okay. I got to get off. I don't... I do remember... Because I remember laughing when... Or kind of chuckling inside on the stand. Remember when we talked about the coffee last time and I said I don't feel like a man because I still take... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I attended with the Japanese girl I was engaged to and she was the one that got me drinking at Black. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still haven't kicked it. I don't think I ever will. No, shouldn't. No. So, let's see, where were we? Oh, yes, the old website and the new website. So, that's what happened with the old website and there's still that cached copy out there. Now, an important thing to notice, Desiree claims in the news media and at the trial that she's so traumatized by this website and it's ruining her life and it's destroying her life and stuff, right? She never, ever once made a single complaint or made a single mention about the cached copy on archive.org, which shows she didn't care about the website, she just cared about getting me convicted and sent to jail. And not because she cared about me being punished for having done something wrong, she just, it's just another jab. It's just this back and forth battle that's been going on forever. I don't remember, but another thing that I kind of found quite funny, 
the bottom of this new website, the disclaimer or the whatever you want to call it at the very bottom. Sure, the footer, yeah. Of every, yeah, the footer of every page. I don't know why they take an ID. I see you have a ID. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I know it might seem strange. You're probably thinking, but you wrote all this stuff. What do you mean you don't remember or you don't know what it says? I'm actually being completely uh, honest when I say I did not publish this stuff. Um, okay. Because as long as it's done in a certain way, I haven't violated the probation. And so I'd love to see Meyer come after me and say, oh, you created this new website, you're violating the probation. And I'm like, yeah. I don't. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if you published it. I mean, you seem quick over there. I, I think you wrote it. This material. I think that's fine. Yeah. Like, I think that's. I'm sure you've seen the probation conditions, right? Yeah. There's nothing in there that says I can't write stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't have the bottom. Ah. Oh. Wait. Yeah. It's like I said to the judge at the probation hearing on the 14th. This day, right? Oh, yeah. That's cute. The little Facebook. What is it? Oh, yeah. The, you know, the, yeah, finger. Right, the finger. Is that because you don't have pictures of them? Or? Um, that would be because whoever is doing that uh, did not have pictures of them, yes. Okay. May I read the footer? Yeah. I, uh, I saw that I didn't have a picture. I... Uh, <laughs> you must have seen this. Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> I read this and I'm like, oh, that's smart for sure. I, I'm not saying you put that on there, but that's your writing because you're a pretty funny guy sometimes with your. Because there was something like that on the old one, but not quite uh, this overt. The second one down there. But see, you know, if, yeah. if you see what I wrote about Suzanne Elliott, yeah. you see, I'm not just slamming everybody. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, and same with mine. I mean, hey, I, I, I know you probably love, did you look for a photo of me you couldn't find? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, okay. Any questions that you phrase like that, uh, did I look for a photo? Okay. We're going to assume that means did whoever publish this stuff or create this stuff, did that person look okay. for a photo? Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to keep correcting you every time, and sure. it'll get tedious. And I might miss it one time, and then Mark Meyer is going to say, "Oh, you didn't correct him this time," which means you're admitting it was you. Okay. So, um, but there's yeah. no. Uh, there was a a photo was attempted to. Uh, let's see how can I say it. It would be better to have a photo of everybody who would be mentioned on there, but some people there just weren't photos that could be found, so. Yeah, I don't care either way, but I don't think anyone wants to see my face anyway. <laughs> yeah, there's Heather. Yep. This photo, I don't even know where some of these photos come from. Like that, uh, that one there that looks like somebody I knew from. It looks like he's definitely in uniform. Yep. Um, and there was some kid next to him, a retarded kid or something. I think okay. there was some kind of special Olympics or I don't know what it was. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And, oh, no, it was some young RCMP thing. Oh, um, like, um... Some kind of mentor program. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Okay, gotcha. You, so, you remember him, right? John Philippe Dupont? He was... I know, I know him. Uh, well, he was involved in the original. Thing. Oh, okay, fine. Well, I think I mentioned him here. Right? Yeah, you do. Kind yeah. Of point. Uh, White Knight. You said he... You think yeah. he's called White Knights for him. Mm. He's not very memorable. And then you reference him in mine. Mostly, no. like... Yeah, most of my console two part cost was overwhelmingly forgettable. <laughs> oh wait, half of this. Just a whole lot of don't give a shit. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I uh I, mean, I clearly don't, clearly I did not write this stuff because if I did I wouldn't be finding it so funny. Uh, <laughs> because I would have remembered it. Uh, either that or I wrote it and I just don't remember yeah, it. Yeah, I think you wrote it and you just you so much you, I can't believe how many profiles there are here. I, I all these people they said this is over the whole, uh, not just this, mo is this, this, this most recent case? With oh, yeah. Wow. All that stuff is... I haven't read it. I just read Fox. Yeah. It's taking me days to go through all this. There's, like, if you go down farther in the page, where there's, like, tables at the bottom, where... Okay. Okay. There's something wrong. We should have page numbers at the bottom. Okay. I'll have to have that. I did print the PDF. I did print the PDF. Um, okay, so here are court, court proceedings, and then you'll see, yeah. 
there's audio recordings, here's the transcripts, the PDFs, oh, yeah. and the audio recordings, um, and for each all of these, there, right? yep, wow. for each, like where there's a link here, means there's a separate page right, okay. for that. Because there's the PDF of the transcript, but there's also an HTML version, and okay. when you look at the HTML version or the PDF version, um, every instance where Capuano committed perjury and Legamat Meyer knew that she was lying, it's highlighted in red, and if you click on it, there's the comments in there that explain where the evidence was or how they should uh -huh. have known that she was lying. Wow. This must have I mean, again, this must have taken a lot of time to build this website, or a long time to build something like this. I'm the entire website or just the RV Fox stuff? I would say, yeah, the RV Fox. I would I mean, guess. I'm still yeah, ignorant. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing you have to consider is that, for example, there's a publication ban on Gabriel and Sage's names, and so whoever's publishing this stuff would have to go through all the transcripts and redact their names, and so I'm sure it would be a very time-consuming thing. But exposing the truth and exposing corruption in the system, in the justice system, is a very important thing, and it's worth it for a person to sacrifice the rest of their life so that society knows the kind of bad stuff that's happening in the system. Okay. And is the person that, uh, I'm assuming you obviously have a lot of fans, because I, uh, you know, may I look? Sure. Because this is actually from today, if you want to do If you look at, you want to look at the no, comments no, here, it just, no, um, this post, this was posted on oh, March 12th, 12th, and you see it's only about 17 days. Oh. Is that disappointing? Is that, uh, <coughs> well, it doesn't mean, the first time, you've, like, you've probably seen it since, because this was pretty disappointing. Oh, no, but, um, like, I can have Liz. You know, when I call them, oh, and, oh, oh, and I say, yeah. oh, can you go to that website and tell me how many users it? Yeah, yeah. But um, it's not that it's disappointing. Like, the news media isn't going to do any coverage of anything related to me now because if people hear about me in the news and then they think, oh, let's... Hmm. Oh, that's weird. How that I, I did print a PDF. So no, no, but um, the menu bar usually is down here. Okay. But my understanding is whoever is updating this stuff, um, they enhanced it so that when you scroll down, the menu bar doesn't scroll off the top. Oh, like okay. instead, what it does is it stops at the top of the window so okay. that the, the menu bar oh, stays there. Yeah. yeah. And see, the RV Fox stuff is very critical and important, and so they highlight it in red. Like yeah. Um, but um, just because there's only 78 views here doesn't mean that only 78 people have gone to the website. Um, it just means that only 78 people have read that blog post. Uh, a okay. lot of people might have, like, come and read this other stuff. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I remember, um, well, you're going to see the other thing. I remember the one thing you talked about, speaking of that one from last time, was that you, or the person that creates the website, can see, like, uh, details. Yeah, that's all. Who's, yeah, yeah, who's visiting, from where, what computers. Like, you're, so you'll see today that an RCP computer, or would it say that? Or sorry, some, whoever the creator would see that there's an RCMP. Whoever has access to the web hosting line. And it would say RCMP or something, or... or it would show the IP address, okay. and then from the IP address you can use an IP geolocator service. I'm okay. sorry, hang on. Yep. Is this better than the States, or worse? The food and the coffee. Can they give you coffee? Um, well, the facility I was at, they give you a packet of instant coffee with breakfast. It's horrible, though. Yeah. But they sell instant coffee in the canteen, anyway. But okay. jails here, they sell actual coffee grinds, and they have coffee machines in the housing units. Yeah. So that's much better, because real coffee is of better course, than instant. Yeah. How would you rate this coffee? Um, I would never go out of my way to get and pay for this coffee, but I, I'm a Starbucks. I, I tried this yesterday for the first time. I, I, I think I know where this coffee is from. This is a cork personal copy that they're giving us, so... I guess we can apply to a blend. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was a week. I thought it was all a week. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but I'm appreciative, because... Yeah, no, it's better to be so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, now, okay, you were asking about, and then seeing the IP address, right. and being able to check. So, hypothetically, um, let's say if I had access to the hosting plan, I'd be able to log on right now with whoever it's hosted with, um, and look at the stats, and I'd be able to see the IP address of everybody who's been connecting and how many uh, unique users per day or unique IP addresses are going to it each day and all. Okay. Um, um, I was going to say 
Let's see. I mentioned about the news media and how the Canadian news media... Won't cover it. Yeah, they're not going to... I don't think they're going to give any coverage now on it, especially when you see the kind of stuff on here. See, part of the reason the news media hated me when I was arrested back in 2016 is because I had those blog posts where I was critical of CBC and I pointed out the errors in the story. And so, they seem to have this idea that, oh, as long as they keep reporting about me, then I'm just going to give up and go away. But I don't. And then I end up writing more about them and going, well, look, and they got this wrong and this wrong and this wrong, and here they're completely lying about this. And so I think now because of this here... Oh, and there's another page on here. Can you go to the yeah. menu at the top? Oh, over here. Yeah. Uh, random shit, I believe it is. Yeah. That little arrow means it's a drop down. Um, okay. There's a thing in there, there's a page, where somebody had scoured the internet, found every news... Uh, article related to the case and, uh, you know, CBC's original story and all, and put a copy of all of those news articles on that web page. So people can go to this website now and they can see this is how the news presented everything. Now here's the actual website and mm-hmm. here's, you know, on the news they were saying, oh, it's a horrible website full of, full of vile and, and terrible things that he's saying and it's all lies and then you can see that and go, well, wait a second. But it's actually true. Capona actually admitted that she was a stripper. You remember before she went on the news and said, oh, it's all lies, I was never a stripper. Okay. But when she was testifying, Lagomat had got her to uh, admit that, yes, she was actually a stripper. And yes, she did actually have a drug problem. Okay. So you should actually, I mean, welcome, obviously, the attention, media attention. I would... I would, I, I would yeah. Because... Well, actually, I don't care about media attention in Canada because yeah. that's not the target audience for the website. The target audience for the website is people who may come in contact with Desiree and you know, to warn them so they know what kind of person she is. Um, there's not a single person in Canada that I think will ever come in contact with Desiree. Yeah. So, you see, this website is getting all this like bad attention up here in Canada and all these soccer moms are freaking out about it and... Meanwhile, it's like, yeah, but you're not even the intended audience. Yeah. It's, it's an issue between two foreign nationals, neither of whom have any connection to Canada at all. Like, why do all these psychotic, uh, what do you say, uh, feminists up here yeah. getting so angry about Why don't they just mind their own business? Yeah. You have two Americans that have some long-standing dispute going on. Neither of them is actually breaking any laws. There's no threats of violence. Nobody's harming anybody. Um... She's doing stuff that is despicable and evil, but legal. I'm doing stuff that is... I don't think it's despicable or evil. All I'm doing is just publishing the truth about what happened. Mm-hmm. Even on this Harvey Fox page. There's no lies. In no, no, for sure. And then there's like all this evidence at the bottom. The recordings and stuff. Yeah, that's... So what I was, what I was going with there is if you... If you have the evidence where you kind of contradict and on the random ship pointing out the media's mistakes, mm-hmm. you would obviously welcome people because you want people to see that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have you found many people like uh, that are on your side that have you know I don't know if you have anybody. Yep, lots. Yeah, not surprisingly, mostly men, <coughs> but some of them are women. <laughs> really? Um, well, even like uh, the, some of the comments that people have posted, like in some of the okay. blog posts. Yeah. Um, you'll see sometimes there's a woman down there who'll be saying something about, oh, I hate women who act like this and try to take advantage of this kind of stuff and they make it bad for the rest of us. And, but, um, yes, I would definitely welcome the attention or the traffic um, if people were going to go to the site. And yeah. That's kind of the purpose of the site is to inform people. Right. Let me be perfectly clear on this, even though I was perfectly clear on this in court, but one thing I noticed about Justice Holmes, once the conviction was, once the the verdict came back, then any sense of fairness seemed to just go right out the window. After that point, um, all this evidence I brought of Capuano committing perjury and stuff, um, and even all these emails that she looked at some of the emails, the judge, I mean, and she admitted herself that, yes, there's threatening conduct here. This is clearly relevant to... uh, to this situation. But then when it comes time to, to give the, the sentencing, um, she makes no reference to any of that at all. And instead just goes on and on about, oh, this poor Miss Capuano. And she had to endure all this stuff and you've been attacking her for years and years. And I'm going, what? Why is it that 
everybody else can come with no evidence at all, and everybody believes them. But I come with evidence, and people just disregard what I say. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I had a question, but so obviously you have some supporters. Have you had supporters, you know, uh, with a legal background or kind of um, in policing, anything like that, have come forward to talk to help you or to talk to you? No. Okay. I am curious to know. I'm finding it hard to believe that somebody, you said somebody's, uh, essentially there's an insider that's leaking information to you. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't just make copies of that material yourself before you would give it back? Or did you not have the means and ability to do that? Like, when did you have to give that back to? Um, I had to give the laptop back. That's okay. Friday. That's okay. Well, yeah, I, well, okay, once the appeal started, well, yeah. first, the first time they gave me the disclosure, it was on a, a hard drive. And then when I was at North Fraser, uh, yeah. prior to the sentencing, um, I could access it that way, the external hard drive, I would plug it in, and I could access it on the laptop that the jail provided. Okay. As soon as I was sentenced, then the Crown had the jail take that uh, hard drive back. Um, but then I said, but for the appeal, I'm going to need this uh, disclosure material as well. Like, I need a copy of the website, because I need to reference stuff, and there's lots of emails in there that, you know, prove that she's lying, you know. Um, so then... Uh, the BC Prosecution Services, which handles the appeals, um, agreed to provide me a laptop, and the disclosure material was on the hard drive of the laptop. Um, so instead of an external hard drive. And so that laptop was given back the Friday before I was released. I was released on Sunday, I believe it was. Okay. Um, and on the Friday before that, the, someone from the jail came and took that back. Okay. Okay. So I would have had no way of copying it from there. Okay, and then... Um, but you could tell yourself that it's just not possible. There's no way that somebody could have given him copies of this stuff. So he must have made copies from the material. That, and that's fine. Okay. What I'm saying is you can, you can talk I can think about it, yeah. yeah. Do, you still, do you still communicate with that person, whoever the, the, the no. insider? Obviously, I'm not going to answer that. Okay. 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 Well, I think I'll step out for a sec. Um, do you want anything else? Do you want another coffee? I would like a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> we always think I'm joking. You smoke? Of course. For two and a half weeks, I didn't smoke because there's no cigarettes in jail. Oh. And so, as soon as I got released on December 30th, because it's kind of a, a symbol of freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Since we can't smoke in jail. Oh, yeah, don't you remember before I had made a comment about um, when the coffee came and I said, uh, I don't suppose you have a cigarette. And then you said that you don't think anybody here smokes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll check. I'll definitely check. I'll I, I, I wouldn't expect you. I mean, no, no, if, if, if it's material, I'll give you my word off. Yeah, can you give me a couple minutes? I'll see if I can find a cigarette. Sure, don't forget to leave your recorder here and leave it on because you guys think that sometimes when we're alone in the room, we'll talk. We might say, oh, hi, I'm the yeah, guy, I'm the one-armed man. Yeah. yeah.
We just gotta wait. Um, they're processing somebody. A couple minutes. And then we you really are a decent person. <laughs> Thank you. I tried. Uh, really? I acknowledge that is going on on him. Yeah? Right, what? for sure. I mean, because I know it's a no smoking facility. Yeah. Uh, well, no, we, we have done it. We do do it. Um, well, yeah. you shouldn't tell me that because, I mean, here, you know, you were up here. Oh, oh you tell me you do it for other people, too. And I was like, oh, well. well I, was, like, I should finish <laughs> that. We do, it, we do do it in some cases. But, uh, Only for your favorite clients. Only right? for my favorite clients. Uh, everyone's my favorite client. Well, this is what I do. Right? I, I speak to people. So, um, again, no, like you're putting your caveat. This is, I'm not expecting anything. Of course, of course. Yeah. This is just to... I know you've been in custody for a while, and you've always yeah, been good with me. Yeah, you've always been good with me, so um, and I'm not expecting you to run if that door gets open. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I went for a run today, so I'm feeling oh. like I can run too. So we had to we had to go. Uh, um, Before I forget, um, I should point out. Oh, how should I say this? Okay, if I comply with the probation conditions, I remain in British Columbia. It forces me to be homeless and penniless. I can't get a bank account or anything. I have no social insurance number. Now, I could use someone else's social insurance number, but that would be illegal, so then I'm violating the probation again. Um, so, that's one option, is stay in British Columbia for three years, but be homeless, moving from one shelter to another, and completely penniless and everything. Um, or, spend three years in jail because of violating probation or something. Um, do you see how it's yeah. just kind of... Like, of course, the other option is go back to the United States, take my chances with that. Um, like, geez, I could be homeless or I could be in jail. At least in jail, I've got meals coming. I know at fixed times. I don't have to worry about that or like where I'm going to sleep and all. Or I could be homeless. It's a totally fucked up situation, that, and I brought this up with the judge at the time of sentencing. Um, Do you have, like, uh, like, how are you getting around? Like, how did you get to the... the to the border. Like, I, to I took the public transit. I have a compass card. I took the public transit to the closest point. Was it like White Rock or something, I think? And then from there, I walked. Okay. Um, like, do you, I guess you don't have a car or any means? No car up yeah. there. Uh, yeah. Everything is so expensive. Oh, my oh, God. When I got back to the U.S. and I was in the jail, and yeah. I'm looking to order some stuff on uh, commissary, right? And I see yeah. candy bars. I'm like, oh, I have a candy bar. Yeah. 90 cents. And I'm like, uh-huh. And that's jail prices, which are usually a little bit more expensive than on the street. Yeah, yeah. And we're holy freaking, it's a buck fifty-five 50 or buck yeah. sixty Probably for a candy yeah. bar up here. Yeah, yeah. Everything up here in Canada is fifteen bucks a pack. And I know. Gas and yeah. Because what cigarettes are in the states? Or depends on which state. Um, my friend in Los Angeles yeah. tells me there they're about eight or nine bucks a pack right now. Oh, okay. That's more on the expensive side. Is she just a friend, or is she, are you guys like in a more relationship, or nothing intimate, just friends? Okay. Um, some states like Virginia or Georgia, they're much, much cheaper. I mean, yeah. it's been years since I've been there, but uh, back in the day when they were about like three fifty a pack in California, in Georgia they were like a buck eighty or something oh, okay. when I was driving through one time. Yeah. Huh. Is, um, like, would there ever be, a, would you ever, would they, has there ever been anything more well, than just friends or... No, never anything more, and there never would be. Um, I have no interest in relationships or anything anymore. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, first of all, um, sorry, I have to remember it's being recorded, and of course, yeah, everything chances are eventually it's going to end up on a website, so I have to think, like, okay, what do I not care if the public hears? Um, no, there's never been any kind of relationship. We're just very good friends, um, mainly because of Gabriel. She took care of Gabriel. Like, when Gabriel was a year and a half, he started going to the preschool where she was working, um, and that's how we met. Okay. And then when I was in Homeland Security custody uh, in Arizona, she was taking care of me around. Um, but then we just stayed very good friends. And Do you guys have like similar, like is she a tech, techie person? No. Nope. We have very little in common. Okay. Okay. Um, and I cannot tell you anything more about Liz because I'm getting suspicious while you're asking all these questions about Liz. Oh, uh, no. I'm Even not. though I realize she's outside of Karen's jurisdiction, so there's really nothing you guys can do. I mean, yeah, yeah. For sure. Of course, you could call the ATF and say, oh, we think he's got more guns than they're at this place. But I think after what happened with the last trial and all, I think ATF would probably just go, well, stop bugging us with your petty nonsense. Yeah, they don't care about that. Did you hear the testimony? Well, no, it's just uh, Spizuko, the ATF guy that testified. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't. Right, right, because, yeah, you were a witness, so you're not allowed to hear other witnesses. Yeah, testimony. and I, but, um, I have so many I have so many trials that like, get involved mm-hmm. with, unfortunately, I can't. 
It was it was very clear from his testimony that he thought that this whole thing was a joke, that it was a stupid waste of ATF's time to have agents go down there and seize these four handguns and they were all fully registered and there's no history of violence, no reason to think I was going to go to Arizona and do anything to anyone. And then on top of that, making a huge deal about four registered handguns from Canada, but what about the other non-registered guns from the United States? I mean, when I lived in Arizona, I didn't register the, the handguns I bought there because there is no registration. Yeah. But everybody's making a big deal, oh, he's going to use his four Canadian guns to go kill her. Why wouldn't I use a non-registered gun from the United States? I mean, the yeah. whole thing was retarded. Anyway. Yeah. But, um... So... Like, so you said, um... Chances are this might end up on a website. Would you get it through, like, ATIP, like is your plan to, like, ATIP it? Or, or how would you... Access to information and privacy usually does not uh, provide copies of audio recordings and yeah. video recordings. Um... But... Again, I'm not going to say anything further about how I may or may not have gotten any of the material that I've gotten so far. Oh, you have the, the can you pull up the RV Fox page uh, yeah. in there? I don't know if you noticed it, but uh, go down toward the bottom where it's got the table with uh, all of the material. Okay, I'm going to fill this up here. Here, let me... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I you know the order they should be in. Yeah. I've seen it once or twice. <laughs> I bet. Okay, so at the top is the narrative. Yeah. There's part of the narrative. Part of the narrative. Wow, that's a lot of narrative. Yeah. Jesus, fuck, this guy writes too much. Right, he does. But it's better to have money in front of you. Here, you want to show me? Okay, thanks. Okay, well, that's all the narrative anyway. It's not, uh, and then here we have. Uh, let's see. Uh, RCMP. Ah, RCMP interview. Okay. Uh, not those ones. 2016-07-13 is what I'm looking for. Right here. This is the one, and it says in the comments here, this is the one that the Crown refused to provide me a copy of. This is the one where Desiree is laughing and joking with the RCMP. Um, this is the one that proves that the RCMP and the Crown should have known that she was lying and that she was full of shit about the whole thing because, I mean, if she's laughing and joking about it, well, she couldn't have been too serious. Um, so, Mark, they were kind of refused to give it to do that. Oh, yeah. Everything else, like, he was willing to disclose to me, but that one, he came right out in court and said, we will not give Mr. Fox a copy of this audio okay. recording. Um, which, of course, further proves that he knows that it showed that uh, they should have known uh, the other thing I wanted to... Ah, right here. This is... Uh, yes, this is the one where you were interviewing me, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, this is the actual audio, the transcript of that, and the video, and the audio. Now, the video originally, the audio of it was very, very poor. But uh, some masterminds were able to... Oh, I, I know. I was... Oh, you I watched it. I watched it, and... Uh, I mean, there's only a few people that would know that somebody did something to that and I actually liked what they did to it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I saw it and I'm like, and it didn't pick up on it right away. Mm -hmm. But when it, when oh, I exited, when it was a journey? Or when oh, I okay. exited and I'm like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> that's what I want. Um, no bullshit. Like, that's what we, I want to have happen with all of our interviews. Mm -hmm. um, budget and whatnot. You know, we have to change, I guess, um, we have to change whatever, how we do things. Your microphone is horrible. Yeah. Uh, wherever you have it. But I don't even know how they would do that because honestly, that's what I've asked for this many times as a part of our interview team. I, I don't even know how you would overlay, or I don't know what you call it. But well, I'll tell you what. When I'm no longer looking at charges and going back to North Fraser and all this kind of crap, maybe I'll tell you how that was done. Okay. Okay. But I did notice that, and I, I actually, you know what? I wasn't sure if it was. I mean, I had to remember. Like, did somebody else? do that when during the trial and I'm like I don't think nope. so even um, the copy that I received uh, the audio was horrible yeah yeah yeah, yeah. come out yeah yeah
Also, I would never publish anything about anyone that I wasn't able to prove. So you'll notice that the wording in there, I don't make any allegations against anybody like Matt or Meyer unless there's proof of it. So neither of them can come back and claim defamation because the proof is all right there. There was another thing I wanted to point out as well, but I forget. I suspect eventually at some point there's going to be some investigation into everything that went on in my case. Yeah, I think some heads are going to roll. Is there anything else you can think of that you want to talk about that you want to air in here? Not that I can think of, no. Okay. Oh, no matter what happens of this, now Holmes, of course, the judge, she's going to throw the book at me for this. Whatever evidence I bring to support whatever I'm claiming, she's going to completely disregard it and she'll grant whatever Meyer's asking for. They'll probably give me two years for the probation violations. None of that is going to have any effect on the website. Putting me in jail is not going to cause the website to come down. Once the probation is over, then I'm just going to leave the country again. I'm sure Homeland Security will probably try the same thing. They'll probably try to find some way to get the RCMP to request that I come back here or as they call it. Oh, another thing you'll notice that was published in there, the emails between Homeland Security, the RCMP, and CBSA. In those emails, it clearly shows that Homeland Security was trying to get the RCMP to request that I be sent back here. The RCMP was saying, well, we looked at the website. There's nothing illegal on there. We're just concerned about the guns. Could you guys interview him and find out where his guns are? And then Homeland Security refused to do that, even though I was in their custody. I mean, they could have just come and asked me. Instead, because they wanted to use that as a way to bring me back. So the deportation officer even said in the email that there's no documents, birth certificate or anything, that they could use to deport me to Canada. And if they make me a subject of interest to the RCMP, that would probably be the way to go, and then they can bring me to the border and just hope that the Canadian authorities will allow me to enter. Have you thought about... I know you got caught last time you were now trying to jump it. Had that crossed your mind to jump the border? It had crossed my mind, but then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do everything completely above board. I'm just going to go right into the CBP office and show them the documentation and say, here's what's going on. I'm not trying to sneak in. I'm not trying to do anything. Do what you've got to do. Any regrets? Nope. Because I come back here, I'll deal with this stuff, probably be in jail for a few years or something, and then I'll get out. And if there's still some probation time left, then I'll finish out that probation time, and then the probation will end, and I'll just leave. I know you said that you're homeless, but how are you able to acquire... Obviously, you have a tablet and a cell phone. The cell phone and tablet I had from before I was arrested. Okay. I had those when you interviewed me previously in 2016. The same tablet and phone. I didn't realize that. They didn't look that old. Well, I bought the phone in December... No, January 2016. Yeah. And then I was arrested in May 27th, and then sat in my property at the jail for two and a half years. Okay. Same as the tablet. Okay. Is it a... Motorola. Oh, Motorola. Yeah. Okay. Brand loyalty. Used Motorola all my life, except for a period where I was using a Palm Trio back in 2006-2007. Did they make a tablet, Motorola? Well, Motorola sold the mobile division to Lenovo, the Korean company. My tablet is a Lenovo as well. Okay. And so the phone now is Lenovo, like the new operating system that's on it. Okay. But, um... And, let's see, any other pocket money that I've had, the two and a half months since I was released, I had excellent credit before I was arrested. Now my credit rating is completely destroyed. So I had credit cards and such from before. So that gave me some pocket money. Gotcha, okay. 
What I suspect might happen is those, since VPD right now is holding that potential breach for the website, they may request those tablet and cell phone. What do you think they're going to find on there? Nothing. Okay. Like I said, I would be smart enough not to have anything on me or anything that can be found that would be incriminating in any way. The notes that you have there, there's nothing in there that suggests or proves anything. I mean, there's a... I don't know if you have them there. I'm sure you do, but I bought a tablet while I was in the jail, a writing pad. Oh, yeah. And there's a list of a bunch of things on there that... I think I have... Editions and such. Yeah. Ah, yes. The website? Yeah. Even that proves absolutely nothing because this is just stuff that I want to add to the website. If it's added to the website and published after the probation is finished, then there's no violation. Okay. There's nothing in here saying this is stuff I'm going to add next week or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I... I mean, I'll be honest. I think you're writing the website differently than you're writing. You've admitted that you're writing the material. Based on everything, I think you're definitely publishing it. You're a really smart guy and you probably have a way of... You talked with servers and whatnot in Iceland, I think it was, or whatnot. Yeah. I think that's what's going on now. That's fine. But... Is that what's going on right now? And this is when you tell me. I decline to answer. I know. But you'll notice, I see all these FOIA requests in here, dealing with CBP and ICE. You'll also notice there's nothing in here that is anything along the lines of any kind of threat or to harm Desiree or anyone else in any way other than to publish the truth and the proof of stuff they've done. Okay. What would you like... What's your... What do you go to bed at night thinking about Desiree? What do you want to see happen to her? I don't want to see anything happen to her. I just want everybody else to see behind this facade that she puts up. And as I've said over and over and over, yes, I would love to destroy her life and ruin her completely, but only by exposing the truth about her. And I think that that would be the best way to... I don't want to say harm, but to get back at somebody like Desiree, because she's able to do what she does by lying and cheating and putting on this sad face and crying and getting people's sympathy and pity. But consider, this new website is up, and it's way more damaging to her because of all the proof of the perjury and stuff. Any potential employer would see that, and they would go, well, wait a second, she says this here, that she never published these pictures of Sadie in his underwear on her Facebook page. But here's her Facebook page. Here's the pictures. She's clearly lying about that. And when you listen to the recording of the court proceedings, there she is in court crying to the jury about how, oh, it's so horrible that Sadie would have to go through all of this. But she's the one that did it. And then she said in her testimony, I did not publish these pictures on my Facebook page. But she did. It's right there. Is that on the new website, those pictures, or on the old one, the Sage and underwear? On the original, the old website, had the pictures of Sage and his underwear, but they came from her Facebook page. Okay. And if you look at the names, the file names of the actual images, you'll see they start with FB and then there's a number. All of those pictures that start with FB came from her Facebook page. That's why they're named like that. Okay. The other ones start with IMG. IMG, those pictures came from like a mobile device or something. Okay. The new website, Sage has been completely removed from it, and the reason for that, as I've said to Meyer and Lagomat before, and I don't know if I mentioned it to you at our previous interview, the reason I had put Sage on the website before was to show everybody that she doesn't care about protecting her children. She cares about how she can use them to get their sympathy. And then you look at her testimony at the trial where she was crying and saying how horrible it was, but there's not a single email from her asking me to take Sage off the website, or even from her lawyer. I mean, she never asked her lawyer to ask me to remove Sage from the website. She didn't care. What she wanted was Sage on the website so she can go, oh, feel sorry for me because, look, this horrible man has put my son on there. 
It wasn't done to harm Sage in any way. And yeah. The, uh, no, that's not what I'm asking. I don't have an angle or an agenda there. Uh, the f- one thing I'm curious about, that all that material, the audio, the video, mm-hmm. um, uh, would that not require an absolute ton of, um, what do they call it, bandwidth? Is that it? To, to be able to store that? Oh, okay. Um, well, there's the storage space on the yeah. servers, uh, yeah. like on the hard drives. Um, and then the bandwidth would be, if somebody goes to the website and plays one of the videos, yeah. then that would require bandwidth. Okay. Um, so... Like, to store it all. Like, this, wouldn't that be, like, hundreds or what? Like, and, I don't know. Trying to remember, like, the entire website, I believe, with all the audio and the video and all the news media stuff, Somewhere around six or seven gigabytes. Okay. So that's a, a pretty large. That's pretty large, yeah. Mm-hmm. What would an average would it be? Like, uh, uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I've never created a website. I've always wanted to. Actually, I did try it, but one time, but. Um, okay. Uh, can I pop up for one more second? Hmm? One more second? You don't need to ask. Yeah, well, I don't want to be, uh, I'm quite polite. No, no, I'm, I'm usually pretty polite, so. I don't want to be worried. I can take your, uh, dishes too. Oh, sure, thank you. I'm going to take these too. No, I better take these too. I'm going to take these too. Oh, no. Oh, I remember what I wanted to. Uh, that? I remember what I wanted to point out. Um, yeah. uh, oh yes, with the stuff that's been published on the website now about all the RV Fox stuff, yeah. um, if I were to be prosecuted for publishing that stuff, that could create the impression that I'm being persecuted for exposing corruption in the justice system, and also it could be perceived as being punished or persecuted for simply um, exposing a bad person's bad conduct. Okay. So from a public relations perspective, um, and Meyer's not a very smart guy, he wouldn't catch this, but uh, I mean, you would think... Is that one of, is that obviously, you're saying this is that one of your agenda, like part of your agenda, uh, aside from Desiree and everything that happened? Like in, part of my agenda. Well, one thing I certainly want to show is the corruption and the misconduct that's going on in the justice system here in BC. Yeah. Um, and so it would certainly work to my benefit, I think, in that respect, uh, for me to go back to jail because I published um, proof of the misconduct that occurred in my trial. You published proof of the conduct? Published proof of the misconduct, yeah. like Matt Meyer colluding yeah. and stuff and covering up all this evidence and gotcha. so I published that and yeah. then I went to jail for publishing that. Okay. Wait, that's what we're talking about right now. So you're saying you published that stuff on the website? No, 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 no. I'm saying that's how it could be perceived. Like right. if, if I end up going to jail for you know, for publishing yeah. that stuff. Not saying I did publish it, yeah. but if I'm if the P D does their investigation, then I go before the judge and of course the judge is gonna find me guilty of it regardless of what evidence I show. Um Later, when the book gets published or the website or something, um, that's going to further show uh, how the system is, or how the justice system participants are uh, engaging in misconduct and trying to cover it up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You are, are you going to publish a book then? I think everybody, uh, it would be interesting. You know, everyone wants to know what. Well, you, well, I'm not even your follower. Uh, like people would like to see, you know, what you're thinking. What is Patrick Epstein? What is, uh, sorry, not Patrick. What is the fox? Yeah, what is the fox? Fox or Patrick? What is the fox? Say? Yeah, what is the fox? Say? <laughs> um, I can tell you that there is definitely a publishing deal. I can't tell you anything more than that because of a non-disclosure agreement. Okay, gotcha. All right, I'll be two seconds. Sure.
One more question. The, you have some, some storage keys. Some storage keys in your possession. I hear you. Yes. Is that for, where is that for? Is that for your uh, like storage lockers at your um, UConn? One of the keys has a number two on it. That was for my locker at the Yukon. I was supposed to return that to them. I had forgotten. I was going to mail it to them from the Homeland Security facility. Yeah. Um, never got around to that. <clears throat> the other storage keys, the orange ones, uh, are for a storage unit that I was renting. Because when I first got released on December 30th, one of the probation conditions was that I had to immediately uh, report here um, so I had four boxes of legal material, and so I had to haul those all the way here because I didn't want to risk if I stopped somewhere and dropped them off or put them in storage first, um, yeah. because then that would violate the immediate fee part. Um, and everybody said, oh, you're being silly, of course I would. Um, so then after I reported here, I went directly to a storage unit or a storage place, rented a small storage unit, because I wasn't going to be homeless walking around with four boxes of legal material. And so that's what that is. Okay. And you guys are more than welcome to go through those four boxes of legal material. It's all just the stuff that I had when I was at uh, the jail. Uh, is it the same stuff that's on your website? Or did you get more? Well, there's a lot more in there because there's stuff dealing with the civil suit that was filed yeah. against me. Um, there's all the stuff from the jail itself, like complaints, requests, and such. Um, oh, let's see. There's all the... Uh, Stuff relating to the RV Fox case and the appeal and all. Okay. Do you have anything still at the Yukon shelter? Yes. Okay. Like, how, what do you have there? Not much. Um, there's a few, there's a little bit of papers, um, like some of the documents from IRCC and CDSA that prove that I'm not a Canadian citizen, uh, a few items of clothing, um, some toiletries and stuff. Stuff that, see, my intention was I was going to go report for probation and then um, probably shortly after that I was going to be leaving the Yukon because I even told the uh, the judge on the 14th at the probation or yeah the probation hearing that CBSA has told me that if I that they're not going to put any effort or resources into coming after me but if I go into one of their offices or if I show up at a point of entry then they're going to remove me based on my inadmissibility due to my conviction and all. Um, so I told the judge that no matter what she orders on that day Next week, I intend to go into a CBSA office, turn myself in, and then they're going to remove me anyway. So even if she doesn't remove the restriction, allowing me to, so that I could leave BC, um, I'm going to take steps to get myself deported anyway. Um, and I pointed out to her there was nothing in my probation conditions which prohibits me from going into a CBSA office. So I'll be within my uh, probation conditions by doing that. Now, I would like to point out that is essentially what I did on the 15th. I went into a CBSA office. Uh, turned myself into them, told them that uh, I'm not a citizen, I have no status here, you guys have said so, here's the documentation to prove it. Um, and then from there, I went across to uh, CBP. So, it's not like I was trying to sneak out or something. I first went to CBSA and I told them what I was doing. Did you go, so you went, you left your PO uh, on the 15th, did you go back to the Yukon? Or did you go, like, where did you go? I did not go back to the Yukon. Okay. You do, Did you go straight to the board event? I did not. Okay. I had some affairs that I needed to settle up first or that I wanted to, you know, take care of first. And yeah. Ran into Suzanne Elliott on uh, the sidewalk over by the courthouse, um, purely out of coincidence. Yeah. Um, she's the prosecutor handling the appeal. Okay. Um, and then from there, I stopped at Starbucks, had something to eat and a coffee, and then I went down to the border. Okay. But it's important to point out with respect to the not be within 100 meters of the border and I checked this with CBSA when I got there um, the CBSA office that I reported to or that I went into at Peace Arch is not within 100 meters of the border and so I even asked them I said uh, it, it's at least 100 meters from here to the border right and they chuckled about it and said uh, oh yeah I'm sure it's more than that but don't worry about it we're not going to tell anybody okay okay this, uh, and I'm okay. sure there should be case notes in there about in his yeah. records about it. But then you walked, I guess, through and then went through to the American side, the Americans... Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, again, I emphasize that I told CBSA that that was my intention because I have no status in Canada and okay. you know, I'm in the situation where either way I'm breaking the law. I stay, I break the law, I leave, I file a probation. 
So I didn't like sneak out or do it without telling anybody or anything. And then uh, CBSA said that Homeland Security is not going to let me enter the United States because I don't have documentation like on me to show that I'm a U.S. citizen. Um, and I said to them, well, are you going to notify the probation department or the RCMP that I'm here? And then she chuckled again and said, no, they've got bigger things to worry about than that. We don't care. Okay. So. Alright. Uh, anything else you want to talk about or just wrap it up? Nah, I guess that's it. Okay. Can you go back? Sure. Sorry, sorry, dear. What? What do you have? Uh, well, almost five. Mm. Oh, because you know I've got a dinner plan later, so. Oh, you got to get together. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> I would like to get some toilet paper. Still yeah, still have toilet paper. Yeah, we can wait here. It will come with more. Council of Health, Mr. Fox has been put back in his cell for 16, 45 hours. Um, 
I showed him, I'll do it in order of what I showed him today. First thing I showed him, uh, he brought up the word, the name Bimji. Um, I showed him this piece of paper. Uh, it just has, uh, looks like a B Bimji is a phone number and address and then the lid on there. Uh, I think from there I showed him there's an address uh, for corrections. And there's to talk. This is when we talked about the setup Gmail and Desi Capuano um, tablet. And it's got a phone number on it. Uh, this is my interview plan. I didn't show it to him. And then from there, we just went through the uh, PDF version from the website DesiCapuano.com, which is basically a bunch of uh, blog posts with some profiles for uh, a bunch of people, including myself and police officers and lawyers and judges. Uh, he kind of went and looked at all various parts. And then there were these notes stapled in three in total. Um, it's got various notes on it. Uh, this one talks about, uh, it looks like compiled lists of each uh, of the websites. That says to do website on it. And then this one is for Liz. It's got the 2019-0330, March 30th. And it kind of talks about the website and some other things to do. And then there's another one for Liz and dated 2019-0321 uh, to print. Um, talks about, this is the one where it talks about the Thunderbird and adding an account um, for Desi Capuano. So these will be lodged and I will be ending the statement at 16.47 hours.